not necessarily with movies like Hereditary or Midsummer, but it, uh, it's starting to get back to the whole, let's build our characters, build suspense and story. Uh, and that's exactly what Alien did way back then. Uh, I got the 35th anniversary edition, which obviously comes with the movie on Blu-ray and digital HD. Uh, just a simple packaging in there, which I thought is really well done. Um, and then what's really cool is it comes with a lot of really cool, like, art cards and uh, comic, you know, in this nice little packaging here. So if we uh, take it out. Now, trust me, there is a lot to unpack here, like the entire alien story illustrated in a comic, which I think was really well done. Um, you know, I've actually never read this all the way through at all, but the artwork looks great. I would say. I might actually give this a read tonight. And then obviously you have a lot of the art cards that come in as well. Just a lot of ancient alien photos and concept art, I'm guessing, but it's a really, really cool looking uh, collector's edition and it really kind of showcases like how cool the universe of Alien really is. I know they made a lot of uh, sequels after that and prequels and stuff, but I really, uh, I really enjoyed the original Alien uh, more than I would say any of its sequels, but let me see if I can get this back in its packaging without messing, any, messing anything up.
Next up, we have another steel book here, which is of one of my favorite movies of all time as well. As you can tell, this is going to be a lot of my favorites because it's my top 100 of an American werewolf in London. Now, when I originally saw this packaging, I didn't really like it as much. I thought it was a little too, you know, pop arty, a little too comic booky for me, but I ended up getting it because it was the only steel book I can find. And again, being such a big fan of this movie, I thought to myself, you know what, I gotta have that. Um, one of the main actors in the movie, the main character, is going to be at Monster Palooza this summer, which is a convention I go to every single year. Uh, held in Pasadena, and I'm definitely going to have him sign this because, again, it's just such a crazy movie, especially for its time. Uh, it has a lot of really uh, touchy subjects, I would say. It deals a lot in... I don't know if I can really even say on YouTube that much, but I really enjoyed it. The effects for its time were insane. You know, it's all practical, and I would say they did a fantastic job on it, so I'm happy to have this in my collection, but most importantly, I'm extremely happy to be able to meet one of the actors involved and have them sign this, so maybe on an update video, you guys will see a signature on this one. That's the goal. All right. Next up, for the next four here, we actually have my Avengers collection. Uh, this is my Blu-ray for the first Avengers movie, which, looking back at now, wow, that movie looked really weird. It was, like, lit like it was a TV movie. Uh, it, like, the lighting, some of the cinematography, don't get me wrong, it's a great movie. It's amazing. I love the Avengers, but going from this movie straight to Endgame, it, it kind of really shows you how, like, wait a minute, damn, they got really far. Like, I think Captain America looks ridiculous in that helmet. You know, even just the cover art looks pretty fan-made, like, photoshopped. It just doesn't look right to me. Um, but it is a two-disc collector's edition. Uh, I wanted to get myself a steelbook of the Avengers uh, and Age of Ultron, because those are the only two uh, that I don't have in steelbook. But great movie. I'm sure 90% of you have seen it. Uh, and I'm a big fan, as always. Next up is a movie that stopped so many people in their tracks. You either loved this movie or you hated this movie. I'm kind of in the middle. I don't really hate it and I don't love it. Uh, to me, it's an Avengers movie. A lot of people didn't like how human Ultron was. Was uh, James Spader actually was the person who voiced Ultron, which uh, for all my Office fans out there is the actor who plays Robert California in the later seasons of The Office. But uh, one thing I do like is the packaging of this uh, case right here. It has a really cool like holographic rainbow kind of tint to it, which I think is really well done. I think the cover art is absolutely amazing. The back is incredibly clean, it's just super nice, but my favorite part about this collection, the case is red. I mean, a Blu-ray case being red. Sign me up. We'll talk about colored cases right here when we get to the Halloween ones, but any of the, like, the different colored ones I like so much. You know, the red ones, I've seen some green ones out there, uh, and as you can see, uh, when we get into it, the Halloween collection has black cases, which I love. You know, it's 
it just helps it stand out a bit more out of the collection and I think it fits with the Age of Ultron title the redness of everything already so I would say the movie is meh but the packaging on this baby gets a 10 out of 10 for me next up we have the best Avengers movie in my opinion which is Avengers Infinity War Infinity Ward Infinity War um, I think the cover art to this is a straight up masterpiece um, a lot of people make fun of posters that just kind of put the entire cast on the front but in the sense of you know Infinity War it makes sense it fits um, and I will say I made the joke that this movie is kind of like a Guardians of the Galaxy movie because for the most part we're following uh, Quill and his group and Gamora and all them but I won't be giving away any spoilers um, but it, it's just it's a very very good movie again I'm sure a lot of you have seen it and the packaging gets a 10 out of 10 from me we got the black case for uh, the Ultra 4K HD. Uh, I love slip covers. A lot of um, a lot of movie companies are kind of going away from slip covers, which I don't like because I think they're really, really nice. They're a great way to kind of keep the main um, case itself from being damaged, and it's just kind of a fun feeling to be able to get that. Uh, extra little protection on your movie there but it looks clean and it looks good so Avengers Infinity War and here we get into Avengers Endgame which is uh, obviously probably the last time we're gonna ever see anything this big on screen I mean it was what 10 years in the making 11 years uh you know, building up to this with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I did think they went a little cheap on the cover of this. I mean, you got the big Avengers logo and you got some of the characters and stuff, but I mean, it's Endgame. You have so much art and things to work with and we kind of just get this generic photoshopped copy and paste characters on there, but you open it up and you get all of the fun special features, the Blu-ray, the 4K disc, all that stuff, which I think is great. You know, I really, really enjoyed it. And, you know, I won't be doing it now, but, you know, if you, I'll just do it. If you open up the uh, cases, you get the uh, portraits, the character posters, which I think was really well done. Uh, so I'll put this back right here. But definitely one of my favorite movies uh, on this list that I have here. Sorry about that uh, airplane, if you can hear it. It's, it almost feels like airplane, airplanes will fly over my house and they'll be like, hold on, I'm getting word that the ASMR Ryan is filming. Let's just do circles around his house. But hey, again, Endgame, great movie. I cried like a baby. So, those are the Avengers movies. Uh, go ahead and let me know in the comments which one you like the most, but we'll keep this ball rolling. Next up, we have Baby Driver, probably one of my favorite action movies of all time. It's a really, really well done movie. Uh, Ansel Elgort, I always have a hard time pronouncing his uh, name. He did really good in this movie. Jamie Foxx, everybody, uh, except for a certain someone. John Hamm, like, was the most badass guy ever in this movie. He looked awesome. The music, the soundtrack in this movie blew my, my socks off. It was absolutely amazing. And it is a crime that this didn't win that many Oscars because it definitely deserved it, especially with sound design and just best original score I would have given it this um, just because they're really 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 well deserved uh, and again the cool like post
poster art. It's like actually done, drawn. That's actually like a drawn photo of all the actors, not just photos, which I think is, is really, really good. Um, but again, great action movie. I would highly recommend it and uh, check it out. Now, uh, a trilogy that has lived with me my entire life growing up and I ended up getting uh, this here trilogy collection, which is Back to the Future. Um, I would say in terms of older movies, this would have to be one and two would have to be my favorite older movies. It's the 30th anniversary of Back to the Future and it comes with a lot of really cool bonus features. Okay, so you take the slip cover off and uh, the cool thing that this movie actually did was it did the whole You can hear that it did the whole like page turning thing so you got back to the future one You got back to the future two there Of course you have part three And then you actually have the bonus disc which includes a message from Doc Brown It includes just a lot of really cool uh, special feature items that I that you won't really get in most versions and um, Doesn't it? Yes, so it also has the back to the future animated series on here you get uh, season one episode one and season two episode one Which you know, I thought was a really cool just toss in right there, but I like it. I think, you know, the pack is really well done. Everything just kind of feels really, really good, you know, just kind of. It's a great hardcover there, so I would say this, this is Back to the Future 1 and 2, I would highly recommend. Uh, you don't need to watch Back to the Future 3. Uh, it just. It's not as good, you know, I really think they should have kept it going going into the future rather than traveling back in time to the old west uh, But hey, what are you gonna do? You need to make it a trilogy to really really capitalize on that on that money But I am planning a Marty McFly role play very soon I just gotta lose the weight get my hair cut, you know, because I got the jacket. I have the full cosplay and everything so Maybe sometime very soon we'll get that done. And I know what you guys are thinking, Ryan, we only got a couple of horror movies so far. Well, don't worry, because we have here... The Babadook. Now, this movie uh, actually was supposed to be one of the scariest recent movies. I remember the reason why I bought this isn't only because of the great reviews this movie has, um, but because I was told this is one of the scariest movies ever made. So Ryan, being the smart guy that he is, decided, let me put this movie on. My parents were gone for the weekend. So I was in my room. I turned off all of the lights in the house. I opened up all of the doors, except for the ones leading outside, and I opened up my my bedroom window, and I watched this movie at about one in the morning, because I wanted to be scared for so long. I haven't been able to get scared from a movie. Movies don't scare me anymore the way they used to, and as crazy as it sounds, I like to be scared. It's like an adrenaline rush for me. So after watching this movie, I was pretty scared. It messed me up just a little bit. Um, but obviously as I get older, I start realizing, okay, it's only a movie, it's only this. So it didn't really leave that much of a mark, but it still to this day remains one of my favorite movies. And this pop-up kind of book right here, if it's in a word or it's in a look, you can't get rid of the Babadook. So, I think the packaging did absolutely amazing on that part, so you can, you know, keep the slipcover, obviously. And then here, you have the actual movie. And 
customization on the package does not stop there because as you can see this is the poster art in the front if you open up the case you see on the inside the cover itself is interchangeable so you may not be able to see with the disc in there but at any time i can take this paper out the one inside and i can flip it around to change it to uh the darker um, uh, cover so I don't do that mainly because I just like the uh, the way that like the white and the red and the way they look right here just it's just a preference I guess for me but again one of those horror movies that a lot of uh, horror movie fans like to point at and say this is true cinema this is how horror should be done. They made a joke about it in the new Scream movie where Jenna Ortega's character, I'm blanking on her name, but uh, she's like, oh, I prefer Hereditary and the Babadook because that's real horror, uh, not like slashers and cheap jump scare horror, you know? So, highly recommend it. Give it a shot. Another horror movie that some people kind of missed is The Belko Experiment. Now, I've showed this movie to a lot of my friends and they either hate it or they love it. Uh, it's a fun movie. I would say a movie you shouldn't take too seriously. There's some really, really bad CGI and green screen toward the end of the movie, but the kills, the effects for the most part, are really, really good. Um, as you can see, it's kind of a plain packaging type deal. I got a slip cover, which is good, but nothing to write home about. I just really wanted to, uh, let you guys know that this is one of my favorite horror movies when it comes to just having fun, kind of like the Purge movies, you know? You don't watch those for cinema, you watch them because they're fun. So, I would say, uh, Definitely check them out. Uh, really good movie. And uh, gory. It's it's The Purge meets Office Space. Or Office Space meets Battle Royale. It, it's pretty crazy. I like it. Highly recommend it. Um, I hope you guys are okay with this being a long video. I know a lot of you were mentioning to me that you like the more raw videos with little editing and just kind of hanging out and stuff, so I like them too. I'm glad you guys can hang out with me. But hey, here we have Buried. If you've seen this movie, you know exactly why I'm going to say this. This movie has one of the best endings of a movie I have ever seen. When I first saw this movie, I thought to myself, there's no way. But yes, there is a way. They did so good with this movie. Ryan Reynolds uh, did a really, really great performance in this. Just the way that it was shot, the way everything was done in this movie, I would highly recommend it to you. Um, and if you haven't seen the movie, really cherish your first watch because you're going to want to watch it again and again and again. Um, it's showing it to people. And again, I want to try not to give away anything, but if you haven't seen this movie, gather your favorite person, your friends, your girlfriend, boyfriend, partner, whatever, parents, I don't care. Have them watch this movie with you because their reaction to it is going to blow you away. I hyped that one up a lot. Um, here we have another big collection uh, movie thing. It's a collector's edition of the Complete Chucky Collection. At the time of buying this, it was the Complete Chucky Collection, and then they came out with Child's Play, and then uh, Cult of Chucky, and just just a lot of, lot of stuff out there. Um, more Chucky stuff. There's a TV series now. So I, uh, I really like this one, though, because it's in a big box format. It's very clean, really well done. The back art is pretty cool. Uh, you know, you get a really clear look at all the movies that you get on the front. Obviously, Child's Play all the way through Curse. Uh, 
as you can see here at the Cinerama. Uh, hopefully that focuses or looks good. There's a rating sign on the side there that uh, shows an X rating. I just want to make sure. There you go. So, uh, yeah, the movie came out with an X rating. It is fairly inappropriate. Yep. Hopefully the camera didn't capture that, but it's definitely one of my favorite horror movies of all time. I plan on doing another Alex DeLarge role play, but just a little bit more professional. The one I released on the channel a long time ago was pretty uh, cringe if I'm not already the king of cringe myself, but I'm proud of it. I'm proud of all the movies or videos I made on my channel, and I hope you guys like them too. So, Clockwork Orange Anniversary Edition, one of my favorite pieces I have, if not one of my favorite movies. Speaking of favorite movies of all time, The Dark Knight. This is most definitely my favorite movie of all time. Uh, I don't think I'm joking when I say I maybe saw this movie growing up well over maybe 500 different times. I don't know. I just, I, I loved this movie. Um, also the, uh, the, um, scenes I would watch over and over again on YouTube, the interrogation scene, all of Joker scenes. If you can't tell, a lot of my scary characters are inspired by Heath Ledger's Joker because I just really like the cunning, sophisticated, you know, way he would tell his stories and the way he would talk and stuff. I, I really want to do another Joker roleplay. Um, but I want to make it good. You know, I don't want to rush it. I want to get like a legit cosplay of him and everything. And I don't know if I would do the wig or not. Maybe just keep my hair. But I like it. I think it's a great movie. It is film perfection in my eyes. Uh, but I do know there are some people out there that think this movie's way overrated. And uh, Christopher Nolan's trilogy is overrated and stuff too. But I, I love it. I love his old trilogy. Very good. Batman Begins is a little slow, but Dark Knight, favorite movie of all time. Next up, we have The Disaster Artist, which uh, may kind of go over a couple of your heads. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware of a movie called The Room. The Room is a terrible movie made by Tommy Wiseau, a guy I've met before, and that's actually the character that James Franco is playing in this movie. Um, oh god, Dave Franco plays... What's his name again? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Tommy Wiseau's character in the movie was named Johnny. What was the name? Greg. Greg. He plays Greg, which is Tommy's friend that helped him make the movie The Room, and it just, it's a really funny yet serious look at filmmaking and the way actors kind of go through their career and what you really can do to advance it, if that makes sense. It's just, it's a really, really good movie. It stars, obviously, James Franco, Dave Franco, Seth Rogen is in it, which is a lot of fun, um, but this one actually won a lot of uh, awards as well. It won Best Picture, or nominated, <laughs> and I think, I think James Franco won Best Actor at the Golden Globes, so it's really, really good. I'd highly recommend it. Uh, going back to some of my earlier movies I had in my collection, Drive was definitely one of those movies that I just kind of saw at Best Buy. I heard a lot of really good reviews about it, and I picked it up one day and watched it, and it's amazing. It is really good action. It's not super long. I think it's an hour 50. <laughs> You know what? I, I think like an hour 40, hour 45. It, it's a watch. It's rated R. A lot of violence, a lot of cussing and stuff like that. But 
freaking Ryan Gosling did great in this movie. Uh, I love his performance, and uh, I think that it's definitely one of those action movies that, you know, aren't necessarily like John Wick, but it takes much more of a drama, serious tone to it. Uh, it I can't really explain it that well, but definitely check it out, guys. It's good. We're not even halfway there. Jesus. Next up, we have a signed steelbook by Bruce Campbell himself for The Evil Dead, which is the original Evil Dead movie. If you can't see here, there's Ash Williams, a.k.a. Bruce Campbell. I met him at Monster Palooza one year. He was a pretty nice guy. Uh, it was actually a really funny story on how I met him. I was actually walking into a room because usually at these conventions, you have the actors uh, sitting out on tables just with everybody around them. You can walk by their table or anything. Bruce Campbell uh, was in a separate room. So you had to like line up outside the room and then go in there and meet him one-on-one -on -one in the room. So it was my turn. And I walk in there, and Kane Hodder is in there talking to Ash. Kane Hodder being uh, the Jason Voorhees actor from Jason uh, Part 7 to X. And I love Kane Hodder. I've met him before. I had him sign my Friday the 13th collection, which, you know, we'll get to in a sec. But absolutely amazing experience being able to see them kind of like talk and hang out and stuff so they were in there for maybe about five minutes while I was kind of just standing on the side uh, waiting to meet Bruce and uh, I said bye to Kane as he was walking out and he just said bye and I was like Jason Voorhees, Ash Williams they're my buddies so he signed it, I thought it was really cool uh, the steel book is just plain on the inside but I cut out the back that was kind of taped onto this back part here. I cut it out and I put it in here just so I can kind of save that at least, you know. So some cool special features, but what is there to say about Evil Dead that hasn't been said already? It's a really good movie made by Sam Raimi, which now is considered one of the best directors of all time after making the Spider-Man movies and now he's actually directing the Doctor Strange multiverse movie. Uh, so, highly recommend it um, for the people that can't handle older horror. Uh, I would highly recommend the Evil Dead remake. Now, Evil Dead is coming out with a video game pretty soon that I'm thinking about making a video on. But if I can't, I would highly recommend checking out my Twitch channel. Link in the description. I'll be definitely playing it on there. But this movie is brutal. This is the 2013 remake, I believe. Jesus, my eyes. Hold on, guys. I'm trying to read this. 2013. I was right. This is the 2013 Evil Dead remake. When I saw it in theaters, I walked out going, Oh my God, somebody attach a chainsaw to my hand right now. I'm going to go get some Deadites. But really, really good. Super fast-paced uh, horror that kind of just gives you everything at once. A lot of in-your-face kills, wonderful effects, amazing cinematography, and just the beauty of the original recaptured for a new generation. And I think this one still holds up now that it's 2022, almost 10 years later. Very good movie. I would highly recommend it. Um, another one. I don't know why this is after that. This should have been before in alphabetical order, but The Devil's Rejects, sequel to Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. Uh, I got this one signed by uh, Mother Firefly, and uh, the guy who plays the banjo dude, god damn it. I'm, I'm, what's his name? Banjo and Sullivan. Oh, he's in the band. He's the guy that gets his face cut off. Come on, Ryan. He was such a nice guy, too. I hate myself for not remembering his name. It's back here. It has to be. No. Welp, 
it's a good movie. I would highly recommend it. it got, I got it signed by a lot of them, uh, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, and yeah, I met Rob Zombie. He's, uh, I mean, Bill Mosley, who plays Otis in the movie, which I think is really, really fun. I got this really cool postcard from them. I think it shows some inappropriate stuff, so I won't be going too much into that, but if you can handle it, one of the more disturbing movies I've ever really seen, but again, highly recommend it. Ah, uh, next up is one of the best sci-fi movies I've ever seen, which is Ex Machina. Uh, I bought this because a movie reviewer on YouTube named Chris Stuckman. I'm sure a lot of you movie fans will know who he is if you watch reviews on YouTube. He recommended this movie. I saw it at my Best Buy. I picked it up. I bought it. And, uh, yeah, I just... Like, it, it's hard to explain without giving away too much, but a really smart, you know, uh, scientist, techie guy creates a robot that is an AI, artificial intelligence, and brings one of his interns into his retreat at his home to interact with this robot and give first impressions on this character. Uh, so, without giving away too much, Definitely check this out. It's a bit adult. There's a little bit of blood. Uh, it's mainly nudity, the reason why it's uh, rated R, but I would highly recommend it. It's an A24 film. It stars Oscar Isaac and Donald Gleason before they were, I'm sorry, Dom Hall Gleason, not Donald. And uh, that was before they got introduced into The Force Awakens and the Star Wars universe. So. Check them out. They're really good in this, especially Oscar Isaac. We're here again, everybody. The Exorcist. Now, I love this collector's edition. Unfortunately, I have a little scuffs on mine, but I'm never going to resell these. So, if anything, it just gives it a bit of a personality on my end. Um, if you open it up here, you'll see that I got it signed by Linda Blair a.k.a. Reagan herself in the movie. Really cool setup, really cool uh, packaging. If you open it up, I'll take this out. If you open it up, you see the Exorcist extended director's cut in there, and then you get the original theatrical version, and then the Exorcist bonus disc right there. So. You get a pretty good look at all of those. Uh, that uh, Something that came with the uh, collector's edition is um, the Freidekin collection. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but this is the director of the Exorcist movie, which is basically a memoir, it looks like. I haven't read it myself yet, but it does hold a lot of really cool uh, stills for the movie. Um, yeah, I've never actually really, really dove deep into this one, but it looks like it's a story on the creation of the Exorcist, perhaps, but I'll check it out in the future. Put it back into the hardcover there. And one of my favorite, you know, cinema moments, I would say, would be this bedroom scene right there, so I'm glad they got that. All right, I gotta be careful with that pile. It's starting to get pretty big. Next up, we have another great sci-fi film called The Fifth Element. I saw this one on sale at Best Buy uh, on the Steelbook aisle, so I thought I'll pick it up. It's a great movie. Um, not much to say other than it's a crazy action-packed movie that, you know, doesn't hold back. It's... It was amazing for its time, and I would argue to say that it's still amazing to this day. The amount of costuming and practical effects used in this movie were bonkers, absolutely insane. So, hope that doesn't break, but yeah, just based off of the artwork of the, uh, just, making sure I don't break this, Jesus. Okay, I think it closed properly that time, but yeah, just based off of the artwork, you can tell it's a really good movie when it comes to 
just wanted to show you guys this collection pretty quickly. It's a lot to unpack, but it's definitely probably one of my favorites that I have in my collection because of how clean and, again, individually wrapped these movies are. So. Just a simple kind of 
matte feeling slip cover really gives you that old west kind of vibe but super simple here just the movie in its case absolutely amazing and uh this is a long long movie i believe it's almost three hours yeah it's about two hours and 50 minutes uh, so it, it's it's a long one. I think when they first showed this movie It actually had an intermission in the middle of it uh, at some theaters. So It's really good. I'd highly recommend it uh, Heavy dialogue like a lot of Quentin Tarantino movies. It's mainly built on dialogue um, but super well done incredible actors and uh, And yeah, I just just one of those movies to kind of put down on a cold night and uh, and check out. All right, a surprisingly good horror movie that I would highly recommend to anybody is Hellfest. Hellfest is a super just kind of it, it gets you in the mood to go to a hunt like Halloween Horror Nights or Not Scary Farm. Uh, let's see, Six Flags Fright Fest, Queen Mary's Dark Harbor, any type of hunt at an amusement park, it's really well done. The characters are okay, very basic, I'm the jock, I'm the, the slutty girl, I'm the innocent one, but it's, it's there for what it is. It's a cheesy horror film that gets you excited from all the exciting kills and everything. Uh, I think the ending is what really did it for me. It was just a really, really great ending when it came to the movie. Um, but just a fun watch with your friends. You know, it's one of those movies where when you put it on with your friends, each of you starts to pick a character that you relate with or identify with. And uh, it just really kind of just makes it fun to interact and say, oh, I would do this in this situation, or, oh, why would you do that? No, like, it, it's one of those talk-to-the-movie kind of things. So, highly recommend. Next up is a modern achievement in horror filmmaking. Hereditary. Now, I know a lot of you have uh, heard me talk about Hereditary a lot already, uh, mainly because I love this movie with all my heart. It's a lot of fun. It's great. It's fun in the way where it's uncomfortable. I don't want you guys to think I'm that crazy and think that I had a great time laughing at this movie. It's probably one of the most recent horror movies that made me genuinely uncomfortable. I think right here, actually, it says this generation's exorcist, but heads will spin more savagely. It, I would say, is like a modern-day exorcist, a movie that really makes you uh, uncomfortable. It makes you really think about the situation that they're in, and it doesn't let up when it comes to making you really feel for the family. Uh, I think this movie was absolutely destroyed. Um, at, uh, at the Oscars, uh, Tony Collette should have won an Oscar 110%. This movie, I think, should have won Best Picture as well. I don't know, let's see, 2018. There's a lot of really good movies that came out in 2018, but please, Academy, all you people who determine who wins these awards, can you please look at horror movies? With A24, movies like Hereditary, The Lighthouse, Midsummer, Tragedy of Macbeth, all of these movies that are, like, genuinely good movies, don't overlook them just because they're horror movies. And this was one that they overlooked a lot, but I'm glad that it has such a big fan base. And that so many people agree it deserved a lot more awards. But, uh... We're about an hour into this. We're over an hour in. I hope you guys are having a good time. Uh, we'll continue to go through these. So let's just see. Next up is The Incredibles. What a switch up, right? Uh, the Incredibles is probably one of my favorite Disney movies. Excuse me. Growing up, I think this was the one that I watched the most. It was like this, Monsters, Inc. and Finding Nemo. And Toy Story. <laughs> I watched all the Toy Stories all the time. 
which for like all the movies, I'm not special, okay? I, I watched the same thing you watched. Um, but The Incredibles, I think, was a really, really, really big one that always stood out to me. And this one's actually a two-disc Blu-ray edition. Uh, it comes with a, you know, special edition pack. It comes with a DVD. It comes with a digital copy. All this stuff, you know. Now they probably don't give away any DVDs anymore or digital copies um, just because of how outdated those are at this point. Now it's 4K and Blu-ray, so I'm pretty sure next year they'll have 8K and then 16K and then Diamond version. I don't know, but really, really good movie. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it already. All right. Next up is the Steelbook version of It. The brand new It, not the OG one. I actually don't have the OG in my collection. I know, shoot me, but this movie, I remember when it first came out, absolutely destroyed the box office. Uh, it had so much attention and love put behind it that it did so well. You know, uh, they did great on the casting. Everybody was just super involved really well. It's just perfect in my eyes when it comes to telling this story. Uh, I'm glad they split it up into two parts. Uh, the first movie is incredibly long, and I know it was like a limited TV series thing, but they did great on splitting this movie up with the second one. I don't have, I, I have It Chapter 2, but not in Steelbook, and that's why it's not in this collection, but the original is really well, well put together, well made. I loved it a lot, um, and I'm not even going to recommend it, because you've probably seen it already. Next up, we have these three movies, which is the John Wick Trilogy. Now, we have another John Wick movie coming out, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure John Wick 4 is in production. Did they release a trailer? Already? I'm not sure, but I have 1 through 3 right here. I would say 1 is the best, um, 2 is pretty good, I don't really like it that much, and then 3 was just amazing. I really liked 3 a lot. This one was fun. So I would say out of these three, the first one is my favorite, but probably some of the best action movies made in a very long time. I think Kingsman The Secret Service, which actually is in here. We'll talk about that in just a sec, but John Wick is definitely just one of those iconic characters. He's like the modern day James Bond, you know, just and they couldn't have picked a better person to play him than Keanu Reeves. I mean, he's such a likable person, you know? So, these three movies, go watch them if you haven't. Alright. The movie that split the world in two. Joker. Uh, I love the Joker. I love him as a character. As you can tell, my favorite movie is The Dark Knight. And 90% of that is... Well, 60% of that is probably because of Heath Ledger's Joker. I think Joaquin Phoenix did amazing in this movie. This one is the limited edition steelbook, so you got some really cool glossy artwork there on the front and back. Really well put together and well done. Um, if you open it up, you get your Blu-ray and your 4K discs in there, along with another uh, piece of art in there, so it's really nice. I think uh, the movie itself was really well done. Uh, my girlfriend, Busy B ASMR Raven, you guys know her, almost fell asleep while watching this movie. She does not like this movie at all, and I can't help but wonder why, but she likes what she likes, I like what I like. I love this movie. Uh, the The score is super memorable and nice. I liked it. The acting, as I said before, was really well done. The story, everything. I think it's just a really, really good movie. And I'm really happy I was able to see it in theaters, you know, because this is definitely a movie I want to show to the future generations and stuff like that. Um, and it just, yeah, 
not much to say other than what's already been said on the internet a million times, but it's a good movie. I love the look of the Joker, everything, so go check it out. And as I said before, Kingsman The Secret Service, uh, this was another one of those movies where I saw a really good review from one of my favorite movie reviewers. I went out, picked it up, watched it, and said, wow, he's right. I really like this movie. Uh, I don't like the sequel as much, The Golden Circle, it's meh in my eyes. But this one definitely opened my eyes to how important well choreographed and well shot action is in movies because there are so many movies that rely on shaky cam or bright flashes or just really crazy lights or super up close action to show you how intense a situation is with this movie it it's so well shot and choreographed you don't need those other tactics to distract you from what's going on it genuinely shows you what you need to see and again just really really well done uh samuel jackson is hilarious in this movie i love it uh colin firth did fantastic and of course um wow they didn't even have him on the front what's his name taron edgerton or something like that why isn't his name anywhere on here what well he's a big name now i'm sure you all know taron edgerton uh, he's a fantastic actor in this as well. I think this is one of his biggest roles, or his first roles. Uh, and he definitely knocked it out of the park. I would highly recommend checking this out and watch the sequel. And let me know what you think. It's really kind of drawn down the middle with most Kingsman fans on whether they like it or not. Action, action, action. If you want a movie that is non-stop, balls-to-the-wall action, check out Mad Max Fury Road. Uh, it's really, really well done. It is probably up there with Terminator 2 on how much I love this movie. Uh, I think Tom Hardy did great. I think Charlie Theron did fantastic. And it's just one of those fun action movies that kind of keep you hyperventilating the whole time. Really, really simple packaging, nothing too much, but I highly recommend it. Uh, next up, we have a extremely inappropriate movie called Maniac. Now, this is not the remake with Elijah Wood. This is the original Maniac movie. Uh, this one is incredibly inappropriate. It's shot very guerrilla style. Uh, it's basically about a maniac serial killer that goes around killing women. And it has a super gritty, dirty feel to it, where it seems really real. Uh, I heard interviews and stories of, you know, world-famous directors out there that saw this movie in theaters and had to walk out because of how real it looked. People in the theaters thought they were watching a snuff film. Uh, which obviously we don't want. Uh, so it, it was really shocking to a lot of people when it first came out. I think it has this really cool holographic type of, like, finish to it. And now we have the 4K restoration. This is the actual case itself. Um, obviously, the poster art is extremely controversial. That's why I'm doing my best not to show it too much, but it has a lot, you know, a lot to choose from. <laughs> and you guys will laugh at this. Uh, this is actually the photo of the lead actor uh, on the soundtrack. This right there is the original Maniac soundtrack. I, I don't know. <laughs> There's not much to say other than this movie is brutal. It's very, very inappropriate. And I would say if you're a true horror fan and need to take a look at what older horror was back then, definitely check out Maniac. It's one of the craziest slasher movies out there and uh, really, really insane for its time. So I'll put that one back there. I'm actually going to give this one a watch pretty soon. Thinking about it again makes me uh, curious.
curious if I missed anything. Okay. Next up, we have the Steelbook Ultimate Collection of the Mummy franchise. Now, this is a really well put together piece. You can tell they designed it around the Steelbook, so it's not like they just took something and pasted it onto the front and back. They actually put a lot of time into this. And as you can see, you can't really tell, but there are four discs. I'm sorry, five discs in here. They're just all kind of stacked on top of each other, but a uh, really good franchise. The Mummy, The Mummy Returns, all of them. With Brendan Fraser, I watched these as a kid growing up all the time. And when I saw this collection, I just had a million just different memories rush back to me, and it just felt really good being able to see that. So I bought it, and I watched them from time to time, but I'd, rec I'd really recommend the, the Mummy with Brendan Fraser. Uh, it's really good. It's kind of that Indiana Jones type vibe, but I think you guys would like it. Check it out. Next up, we have one of my more recent favorite movies. This was actually recommended by another movie reviewer I saw named The Flick Pick. I love that guy. I still follow him on Instagram, and I watch his videos every now and then, but Nightcrawler is probably one of Jake Gyllenhaal's best roles. He did great in this movie. It's really suspenseful. Uh, it reminds me of that movie Drive in terms of showcasing Los Angeles and just giving us a good idea of how the news world works. Uh, it's a really crazy thriller. I'd highly recommend it. And again, packaging isn't too crazy, but I do like the cover art a lot. You know, the big yellow stripe there with Nightcrawler on it. I think it was really great, but I, I would highly recommend this. This is something you should definitely watch. Oh. And here we have another prized possession of mine. My complete Nightmare on Elm Street collection signed by Heather Langlingcap, uh, who plays um, Nancy in the movies. And when you open it up, I got Robert England's signature on there. Uh, the man who plays Freddy Krueger himself, uh, meeting him was absolutely surreal. He, uh, from what I know of, don't, doesn't do too many conventions. So when he came to the one that we were at, it was just, it was, it was insane, you know, to think that there was a, a chance for me to be able to meet such a horror legend. And he was really nice. I actually was at his table talking with him for maybe five to ten minutes. He was a really nice guy. And uh, obviously on the back here, you got a list of all the movies there. We get Nightmare on Elm Street 1 all the way through to Wes Craven's New Nightmare, along with a lot of special edition features. So, super awesome. Uh, go check out the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise if you haven't already. Uh, they're really wacky the more you get into them. I think part 2 is one of my favorites, uh, and part 3 is really close back there. I really like part 3 as well. Um, next up, we have Pee-wee's Big Adventure, which I actually got signed by uh, Pee-wee Herman himself. He was a super, super sweet guy. I thought, you know, meeting him would be pretty crazy, but he was, uh, he was really nice. Paul Rubens, he signed it on the back, which I didn't like, because he had it laid out, like, flat. So he did to Ryan, your pal Pee-wee and then flipped it over and signed back here. So, a little weird and awkward to have a signature back there, but hey, what you gonna do? Another one of those classic movies where it just gives you that really old school Hollywood feel. Uh, it's a trip. You know, it's hard to really explain this movie very quickly and short, but it, it is, it's, it's insane, guys. It's definitely one of those that you have to watch yourself. Um, next up, we have one of my favorite comedies of all time, which is Popstar. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with The Lonely Island at all. I'm sure you know who Andy Samberg 
Marcus. He's a really popular SNL alumni, and he's done a couple things here and there lately, but Popstar was his first, like, I would say Hot Rod was his first comedy that he starred in, and this one was a much better comedy. Popstar is a mockumentary type of movie that follows this very douchey, cliche pop star guy. And it's just made to mock a lot of those documentaries that take themselves too seriously. It's funny. It actually has fantastic music featuring Andy Samberg and the Lonely Island. And it's just one of those movies that you get left with a smile on your face all the time. So check it out. It's a lot of fun. And I love this gold packaging. Very, very shiny, very cool. someone's makeup look and uh he was performing 
uh, doing a meet and greet on one of the stages, but I was unable to see him because I was getting, I was stuck in the makeup chair, and one of my good friends actually talked to him after his performance on the stage doing a meet and greet, and he said, hey, can you come say hi to one of, you know, my friends, he's a huge fan of your work, you know, and just, you know, take some pictures with them. I turned and saw a man walk outside the corner with the full-on makeup, full-on hood, everything. He brought the skateboard strap, he bought everything that he had from the movie, and I was able to take a picture with him. It was, it was surreal to me. And again, you got the two stars down there, signifying that this is the second movie in the Birch franchise. There being the, um, what does he call them, the door buster or something like that, the, uh, yeah, the door buster, or something like that, the bunker buster, or something, is the shotgun that, uh, one of the main characters, uh, landlords or neighbors uses to break into her home, uh, but again, really, really cool, uh, you got the disc right here, along with the god mask and a birch crew right there, um, it makes me really happy that a lot of the Birch movies are aware. They're aware enough to know that a lot of the viewers that like the Birch movies, uh, they like the killers more than they do the protagonists and the innocent people. Most of the Birch people dress up, most Birch fans dress up as Birchers and not as innocent people uh, because they like to connect and, you know, just it's more interesting to see the crazy side of things than to see the, uh, you know, nice, normal side of things. So here we have the Purge election here, which I don't really have many complaints about. It's an okay movie. It does good in showing us a lot of action and a lot of crime that happens out there. Uh, you got Lady Liberty on here. A lot of you that have been fans of the channel for a long time know that I have a Lady Liberty mask I made myself. I know a lot of companies started uh, making them and selling them, and so a lot of people thought that it was just a bought one from those websites, but I went out, I looked at the mask, I looked at a lot of photos, I bought a plain white mask, spray painted it, and actually drilled holes into the mask to weave through uh, one of my lights that I had on there, just a little simple light. Uh, string thing that I got, but really good on the back here. You have Uncle Sam's AK-47, and if you open it up, there's Uncle Sam right there, and uh, obviously you got old Honest Abe right there waiting to hit him, so I like it. I think it's a really cool packaging look. I don't know why they made her blue. They probably should have made her green, uh, because that was the, you know, that's the way she looked. They probably did it to maintain the red, white, and blue kind of look of the packaging here. So. Okay. And the final one in this Burge Steelbook collection is the first Burge, uh, which, if I'm being honest, no, I didn't really enjoy this movie as much as the others. It just got really weird and just not that, like... I don't know, it just didn't really feel that much like a Burge movie, if that makes sense, but it it's an interesting take. I remember when they first announced that the next Burge movie in the franchise was going to be the first Burge, meaning it's the first Burge ever to take place, and it shows us like a prequel story on how that goes, but uh, yeah, cool packaging. I actually also made this mask myself for a roleplay not too long ago. Um, you got some pretty cool uh, packaging right there, along with a lot of the art going on. So, those are my Burge Steel books. I like them, I think they're really cool. And uh, again, the four stars right there. You guys are probably like, why is Ryan keep looking down? Uh, there's a monitor right here that allows me to see what you see. So, I'm just making sure that everything's in frame and the glare isn't too hard on it. Uh, next up, we have Ready or Not, which is another really good horror movie. Uh, pretty, pretty well done. I liked it. It has more of that indie feel to it, but it's still a lot of fun. 
it's great. It's, uh, it's, uh, it reminds me a lot of the movie You're Next, and You're Next is a really, really good movie. Excuse me. Uh, but yeah, this one is another fun watch that you can check out with some friends. Uh, the ending is ridiculously funny. And, uh, I just, yeah, not much else to say. Just a really fun watch. Uh, one of my favorites in my collection, for sure. I have more airplanes flying over. Uh, here we have Leonardo DiCaprio in The Revenant. This was the movie that got Leo his first Oscar win. Uh, definitely a extremely long movie that takes its time in telling the story of a father trying to avenge his son and just a really, really cool idea uh, in terms of the setting that it takes place in. They're just covered in snow. They're just... The dialogue, the cinematography, the pacing of the movie, it's really, really well done. Uh, if I'm correct... If I'm correct, yes, it's 160 minutes long. So it's about two and a half hours and... It's a watch, but just like the Hateful Eight and Quentin Tarantino movies, they're long and dialogue heavy, but they are worth the watch. So, The Revenant, check it out. Um, see why Leonardo DiCaprio even got the Oscar in the first place. All right, next up we have a movie I watched all the time as a kid, which is Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Uh, this is the 25th anniversary edition, very basic packaging. It's a two-disc combo pack uh, that has a special features disc in it. I have been dying to get the Who Framed Roger Rabbit steelbook. There's a golden steelbook out there with this movie that is extremely rare, and I believe it's worth a lot of money. I wanted to get it. I wanted to just... Yeah. I, I love this movie. Growing up watching it was always a really big part of my day. And, uh, you know, rewatching it as an adult really makes me realize this was not a kid's movie at all. This is very much an adult's movie. And, again, just a really fun one that you can uh, watch and have a good time with. So. Put that one down there, and here we go. This is my Saw collection. Yeah. Yeah, they fit seven movies in here. You see this little thin thing right here? There's seven movies inside of this thing. I think there is, what, three discs in here? There are two discs. Oh no, there's three, okay. There's three discs in here. You got one back there and then one behind the, the packaging that shows you exactly what you get in here. But these discs do not have menus. They don't have many special features. They're just the movies, you know? And it's cool because I had the honor of meeting Tobin Bell. Uh, Jigsaw himself, and a fantastic person and a, and a just incredible actor. Uh, and he signed this and just really, really made me appreciate uh, the movie even more when meeting him, being able to take a picture with him and everything. But this is not how you do a collection. You make it big, turn it into a box set, give these space, these, these movies some room to breathe, give them their own disc or something, you know? So I respect the Harry Potter one for at least giving us the discs separately. You don't give someone a disc and say, yeah, this one has one through four. Have fun. Putting these into the Blu-ray player shows that there's no menu. It just has you select the movie, and it just plays them. So, I would not recommend this specific collection if you're a collector. Uh, thankfully, I was able to get Tobin Bell to sign it. I hope to meet him again. And if so, I'm going to buy these all individually and have him sign it like that. Um, but, yeah, I just really, really, really... Uh, don't like it when movie collections do this. Other than that, I love the Saw franchise, one of my favorites. I 
know the movies get much worse the more you watch them, but uh, they're guilty pleasure movies. Next up, we have a steelbook of Scarface. Now, Scarface is probably one of the most adult movies I've ever seen. The cussing, the drugs, the violence, the, the nudity, the everything. It's all in this movie, but it is by hands down one of Al Pacino's uh, best performances in a movie. Uh, it's really, really f just insane. I love, love, love the artwork that they have inside. It's a collage. And what's really cool about this is, along with the movie itself, it actually comes with the original Scarface movie. There's one that came before this one uh, that was made... I don't know what year this one was made, but I think it was sometime in the 60s. Um, it may have been the 60s when that movie was made, but as we all know, Scarface has come to be a classic in the movie world, uh, which I really, really like. So, the fact that I got it on Steelbook is even better. Sorry about my chair, by the way. It's, it's extra squeaky today. Next up, we have the Scream 5 film collection. Now, don't let the 5, um, you know, trick you on this at all, because it actually only has Scream, Scream 2, Scream 3, and from there, two documentaries, Still Screaming and Scream, The Inside Story. Uh, it's okay. You know, I love Scream 1 and 2, Scream 3 I'm a little eh about, Scream 4 we'll talk about in a sec, and Scream 5 I gave a full review on on the channel already, but I just, I, I really wish this uh, collection came with uh, at least up until 4, because I believe this collection was released uh, after 4 was released on Blu-ray, so I don't know why they didn't include it, and then here we go. We have all of these. Uh, this is the two documentary discs, Scream 3, Scream 2, and Scream 1. As you all know, Scream is my favorite horror movie of all time. I just really like it. I think it's fun. I think it does really great in dissecting the horror genre as a whole, and uh, I liked it. So I'll put this over here for now while we talk about Scream 4. Now, I'll be honest with you, Scream 4 is very forgettable to me. Uh, I liked parts of it, but I know a lot of people would complain about the color grading that was done to the movie. It looks like it has this Instagram filter over it the whole time, and it's just really weird. Um, so, I would say maybe if they fixed the color grading on it, it would be a little bit better and easier to watch. But it just kind of looks a little trippy sometimes. The contrast is just turned to a f like 500. Um, but it's all right. It has some pretty good kills. It bring back brings back some iconic people, um, as did Scream 5. But it's it's all right. It's not one of my favorites in the franchise, I would say. Um, it's kind of up there with Scream 3 for me. You know, not amazing, not trash. It's just there. So, although a lot of the things they did in Scream 3 was just weird. Um, next up, we have a movie that I saw due to another recommendation. Uh, beautiful packaging with the holographic look right here, but this is The Shape of Water. It won uh, many awards, actually. It was nominated for 13 Academy Awards. Uh, it won a couple of them. I'm not sure if A Shape of Water, I think The Shape of Water did win Best Picture, actually, which it deserved, I think, I think it won it, uh, but it's really, really good, it's a little dusty, but it's a really great movie, super well done, uh, the creature suit in this is unreal, absolutely amazing, uh, the dialogue, the music, everything, it just is one of those really cool love stories, um, that just keeps you hooked almost the whole time. So definitely recommend checking it out, especially for my special effects fans. It's a really, really good movie to watch. Next up, we have 
a steelbook I had to get shipped from the UK because they do not have an American version uh, in the US, which is the Shining. Uh, this is a special edition Shining steelbook. I like the background there. Um, I got it from the UK. I believe this is the UK. Um, because I couldn't find a good one here in the US. As you can see, the back art is right there of Wendy kind of screaming at Jack when he's smashing his axe through the wall there, which I would love to do a Shining roleplay for the channel. I think that'd be a lot of fun, but I think I've already said a lot about The Shining on my channel in the past. <sighs> Excuse me. It's definitely one of those movies that have stuck with me since I was a kid, since watching it. It's a classic. It's something that, you know, not many people can say they haven't seen. Uh, it's Jack Nicholson's, one of his best performances ever, one of the best performances in a horror movie in general. And it's probably one of my most quoted horror movies. And I just like it. Everything from the terrifying uh, original score to the acting to the pacing to everything. It's a long movie, but it is worth it. All right, next up, we got a fun one into the Spider-Verse. This movie was insane. It was absolutely perfect. I liked it. I thought it was really well done. I think all the characters were extremely likable. Uh, it just, it just really flowed really well, and it probably had some of the nicest, craziest visuals I've seen in an animated movie in my entire life. You know, I just watched Encanto, and that movie has great effects. It looks beautiful. Coco has great effects. It looks beautiful. But this movie, the comic book art style, everything that it came with was just... Uh, Magnifique. So, I would highly recommend it if you haven't seen it yet, especially if you're a fan of Spider-Man. This may be one of the best Spider-Man movies made. To me, I would say it's probably top three for sure. Alright. Speaking of Spider-Man movies, I have the Sam Raimi trilogy right here. Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3. Spider-Man 3, I'll start off by saying, I think it gets a worse rap than it deserves. It's not that bad. Stop crying, okay? I know emo Peter Parker is annoying and stupid, and they shouldn't have done that, and Mary Jane is one of the most unlikable characters in all of comic book movies, but it's not that bad. I said it. Spider-Man 2 uh, is still seen as one of the best Spider-Man movies ever made. I think it's great. I think Doc Ock is one of the greatest villains ever made on cinema in general. Uh, I love it. Just great. Awesome. I hate Mary Jane. And, of course, the first one being the most iconic of them all to me. I remember I had a Spider-Man and a Green Goblin walkie-talkie toy where it was just like action figures of them, but there was a button on their ribs and you would just talk into their chest and it would, you know, be walkie-talkies. It was really weird, really crazy, but I mean, it was fun to play with. Um, really, really cool. I would say this definitely was the thing that opened the door to making more uh, comic book movies. I would say it's really, really well done, and the tone of everything, uh, it just being really wacky and over the top, fits the comic book world a lot. All right. Spiral. Spiral is the most recent uh, Saw film that is actually really good. You know, I know a lot of people, this really cool slipcover is kind of clear and just has a couple of features right there, but I know a lot of people were torn about this movie, whether they like it or not, but it, it was a really fun movie for me. I enjoyed it. Uh, I think they did a great job in, um, in separating themselves from the past Saw movies. Uh, they did great when it came to making their own movie with the Saw title and maintaining that kind of uh, feel that 
a Saw movie has. Very visceral, fast-paced. You know, the trap scenes were really good. The traps themselves were great. The story behind it was great. And I just really, really enjoyed this. I think uh, Chris Rock is fantastic in this movie. And I'm really glad he was a big part of the creation because it uh, it really, his performance definitely carried a lot of the film too. Uh, but yeah, Steelbook. I like it. Really, really good movie. I would highly recommend it for any Saw fan. And if you've seen this movie, let me know in the comments below what you thought about it. Because again, like I said, I know it separated a lot of the franchise uh, fans. <laughs> Alright. Next up, we're going to go through these pretty quickly. These are all of the Star Wars steel books that I have. Again, I have a lot of steel books and I have them for a reason. I love them. Starting with The Phantom Menace. Looking good. Darth Maul's looking great on that front cover. The back cover is the iconic poster there. I think it's really, really good. You open it up, got your nice little uh, 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 artwork in there. The movie itself is... <coughs> I didn't like it that much. I didn't. Um, obviously, the mall fight at the end is the highlight of the movie, which I believe is the reason why they have him on the front cover. Um, but yeah, I definitely have. Yeah. I would recommend the prequels if you're a Star Wars fan, just to get more Star Wars in ya. Uh, Attack of the Clones, I actually really liked. You got Yoda up front there. Uh, you got the homie, Anakin, Padme, just all the, all the dudes back there looking good. Jango Fett looking pretty badass. Uh, but again, pretty self-explanatory looking packaging. Uh, and of course you got all the clones in there when it comes to the artwork on the inside. But, uh, pretty fun movie. You know, I know a lot of people, uh... A lot of people rag on the prequels for using a lot of green screen and what they were doing, which, granted, it doesn't look good, but it definitely made it stand out, if that makes sense. And there's actually a lot of really good practical effects in there, too, that not many people know about. Uh, they're just too busy looking at the green screens. Revenge of the Sith. Now, why they don't have Anakin on this cover rather than General Grievous, pisses me off. They should have included Anakin on the front. The back has really, really awesome poster art, which is great. And then the inside has one of, if not the greatest lightsaber duel in all of Star Wars cinema. You know, I, I really, really liked it. While a lot of people say that the only uh, worth watching part of this movie is the last 30 minutes, I enjoy the majority of it. Uh, it kind of just, it pleased me on how it tied everything up and then led to episode 4, which I think did great, but you know what? Check it out for yourself. Let me know what you think. I know it's really torn, especially with the Star Wars fan base on how people like that stuff. We have a new hope on here. Uh, as you can see, there's a recurring theme of them putting the villains on the front. I guess it's because they're just a bit more iconic. I think, you know, Darth Vader's helmet is one of the most recognizable things in all of cinema. So, you got a new hope right here. You got the poster art on the back. And right here inside, we got Luke. There you go. Looking good. Next up, we have Return of the Jedi with Palpatine up front. Amazing looking background there. This was another one of my favorites, which just freaking... This may be a lot of people's favorites in the entire franchise, but Return of the Jedi was definitely special. Uh, let me show you guys the artwork inside. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I know, I know. All right, then we have the Empire Strikes Back giving us a look at a really basic Stormtrooper. The back with the poster art, really, really good. Okay, and then we have Hoth right there on the inside. I'm trying to run through these pretty quickly. 
I know it's still going to be a really long video for you guys to enjoy. Next up, we have The Force Awakens, which, although it is a complete retread of A New Hope, it did its job in introducing new characters and giving us fan service with old characters, and it really just was a safe movie to make. You know, why try to change something that's not broken? Let's just redo A New Hope with these fun new characters, even though Phasma was marketed to be this incredible crazy villain, she ended up getting almost no screen time, and whenever she was on the screen, she was just this lackey that they toyed around with that, you know, I just, I don't want to talk about it, but yeah, just, I wish they did more with her. Kylo, in my opinion, is one of the, uh, stronger parts of the sequels. Here we have the Blu-ray film, uh, the DVD, and then the bonus disc right there in the back. So I thought they did pretty good. I know the sequels are extremely, um, people are really indifferent about the sequels, but I liked Force Awakens, you know. Here we have one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Star Wars movie of all time, which is Rogue One, um, the prequel to A New Hope. It is perfect. It is, it captures Star Wars in one of the best ways possible. Uh, the ending makes you cry. There's, uh, oh wow, I just realized this includes a Blu-ray 3D disc. I never really even looked at that, but looks like we got the bonus disc and we got the movie itself, but the cast in this, everything was just, just perfect, absolutely beautiful, so I would highly recommend Rogue One if you're a Star Wars fan. Not only is it, not only 
only does it show a lot of political sides of things when it comes to growing up in certain areas and how things were back then, um, but it really motivates you to continue fighting for that dream, continue going for what you want in life, and don't let anyone stop you, even when it feels like the whole world is against you, you know? Stand up for what you believe in and scream it from the mountaintops. All right, next up here we have Super Bad. This is one of my earlier steelbooks I got. Super Bad is one of the first comedies or adult comedies I watched growing up. Uh, it definitely is not for children. It features maybe 10 million curse words. I would not recommend it for children, but it's a lot of fun. It's in really clean looking packaging. And I, I just, I would recommend it to the adults that can handle adult comedies. Uh, next up, we have a very special one to me, Terminator 2. This is probably my most iconic movie growing up. Uh, this was always my favorite movie. We got Arnold on the back there as the Terminator. And as you can see, these signatures are from Edward Furlong, which plays John Connor. Uh, and then um, the T-1000. What's his name? What is his name? I feel so terrible. I have it right here. One second. Robert Patrick. Ah, Robert Patrick. Um, yeah, he is absolutely amazing. I met both of them. They're incredibly nice, especially Robert Patrick. Really cool dude. And uh, him signing this was just really, really awesome. It was great meeting him. Uh, I remember growing up, I always really uh, was scared of this movie in some parts, but it grew on me. And now it's one of the greatest action films to ever exist. Ah, uh, yes, with the brand new Texas Chainsaw that came out. I've been re-watching a lot of the original Texas Chainsaw movies. And here I have the 40th anniversary Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, Blu-ray set. The only thing I don't like about this one is that it's much taller by a couple inches uh, than other movies, which I don't really like when displaying on my shelf, but it's really cool because it actually features a slide-out look there, which if you flip this around, it's actually his little meat locker. Isn't that cool? You can slide it out and open up the locker, or you can show Leatherface there, which I thought was a really cool creative way of putting on a slipcover, which again, I appreciate anything that uh, will do that. So I'll leave that right there. Uh, and this was that other thing that I mentioned has the flaps open up here. We have really amazing artwork on here featuring some of the original cast. We have the feature film. We have uh, the special features disc, both on Blu-ray and on DVD. Um, but just really, really great artwork all around. You see Sally there with her iconic little scream scene there when she's running away right outside that window. But I really like this look. I think it is a really well put together, well, you know, designed collector's edition. And as for the movie itself, it's a classic. I know not many people might like it, but it's one of my favorite horror movies for sure because it just, it's so intense. And I know I use this word a lot, but like gritty and dirty, it just really, really makes you feel hot like you're in that Texas weather too. So I would recommend it for anybody that hasn't seen it. Next up, we have Titanic. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Ryan, you like Titanic. That movie is a romance movie, and for, it's a chick flick. No, it's not. Titanic is awesome. It's probably one of the most iconic movies ever made. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, Kate Winslet, and I even got it signed by Billy Zane himself, who plays that villain right there. Right there, that villain right there. That guy is an ass in this movie, but what is there to say about Titanic that hasn't been said already? If you haven't seen it, 
you're probably about seven years old or ten years old, but if you have, I know you love it. I know it's great. The acting is amazing. It's very long, but it is worth it. So if you haven't seen Titanic, sit down, grab some popcorn, get yourself a nice cup of ice water, and enjoy. Next up, we have John Carpenter's The Thing. This is another really insane horror movie. And when I saw it in my collection, I thought, okay, I've really got to show this one in the collection because although the packaging isn't that nice or that crazy or sparkly or too insane, the movie itself has probably some of the most terrifying special effects I've ever seen in a movie. There are still moments in this movie where I feel like I want to pause it just so I can see what's going on because the effects, everything done in this movie was just so perfect in my eyes. I, I couldn't take my eyes off of the screen or anything because it just looks so freaky. So a great suspense movie. It leaves off on a really insane note, but again, uh, watch and see for yourself. So go check out the thing. Probably one of my favorite comedies of all time is This is the End. Uh, basically, James Franco and his friends all play themselves in this movie. James throws a party, and during the party, everything goes wrong when the apocalypse comes around. It is so funny. It's a lot of that James Franco, Seth Rogen comedy, but what do you expect from a movie where the actors are quite literally playing themselves? Uh, it's a lot of fun. Great. And I think Jonah Hill is a shining spot in this movie. It's really, really good. So, highly recommend it. Check it out. Uh, one of the first comedies I would watch over and over again. I'm out of school now, so I can say it, but don't. Don't take this as advice. Don't do this. I had that movie downloaded on my phone when I was in high school. And in one of my classes, I sat in the back. I was kind of far from the teacher's desk. When I tell you that I would, like, prop up my phone behind a book and just hide my headphone like this. You know, like, I have headphones right here to monitor my audio. So I would kind of just pretend I'm reading. But the whole time I would be watching, this is the end. That was the only movie I had downloaded on my phone. So... I would watch it maybe, what, twice a week in my classes. It was, it was hilarious. <laughs> Next up, we have the Toy Story trilogy. Now, in my eyes, they should have ended, they should have ended Toy Story after the third one, okay? The first one is iconic. It's amazing. It gave birth to a brand new style of animation with Pixar, one of the greatest animation studios in the world. Amazing. It'll make you cry. The second one made me cry even harder. Really, really good. Absolutely perfect. And as an ASMR fan, it has one of the greatest ASMR movie scenes ever made. When that guy is cleaning up Woody. Toy Story 3. While I was really indifferent about this one, I thought it ended perfectly. This was the best way you could have ended a Toy Story trilogy. But they just got a little bit more hungry for that money. So they made Toy Story 4, which I don't have in my collection. Because like I said, in my eyes, it all ended with 3. I know you guys have probably seen them already. But if you haven't, go watch them. I would say Toy Story 2 is probably my favorite out of all of them. Here we have the complete Twilight Zone series, the original series. Uh, every single episode, I think 156 episodes. I love this show. My brother actually uh, got me into this show and I started watching it with him. But if you are going to tell me that this packaging isn't super great for what they're selling, you're lying. Okay, saw Harry Potter, take some notes, you open this bad boy up. Oh god, I don't want it to be too loud. Hopefully that wasn't too loud, but you open this bad boy up, you have all of the episodes. 
episodes and disc seasons and stuff on there. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four discs. Oh my god, it's falling apart. Um, but it just, it's a really good set up. Hopefully that's not... Jesus. I'm so sorry if that's too loud for you guys. I'll see if I can put that down in post, but I'm sorry if I miss it. Um, really, really amazing series. I would highly recommend it for you people that may like black and white old school uh, TV shows and movies. It's a classic. I have Jordan Peele's first season of His Twilight Zone, which is pretty good. There are some good episodes and other episodes where it's kind of like, okay. Um, but this has a lot of really good ones. Definitely check it out. One of the more recent movies I showed to my girlfriend and my family was this movie right here, Upgrade which is actually made by Blumhouse, uh, the people who made The Purge and Happy Death Day. This movie is considered a horror movie, but it's more of a sci-fi action movie, and it's so good. It's really, really good. I would highly recommend it. You guys would love it, I think. And, um, and it just, it just really kind of shows how creativity and appreciation for movie creation can go a long way. Uh, there's a jigsaw easter egg in this. There's a callback to, uh, James Wan. Just a lot of really fun things. Uh, and it just, it just, it just really, really looks good. You know, it's one of those really well shot movies that are creative in the way that they, they do storytelling, which I would highly recommend to you guys, so... Next up, we have Us, which is Jordan Peele's second feature film after Get Out. Everybody was looking to this movie to be amazing and to really turn heads and make people go insane. And that's exactly what it did. It's a really well put together horror movie. Uh, I don't like it as much as I like the movie Us, but it's fun. It has its comedy. It has its horror, its action, and its beautiful storytelling. Uh, I think one of the best soundtracks recently, too, with the I Got Five on it. And just, like, the main theme is really eerie. So, I'm excited for, uh, for Jordan Peele's new movie, Nope. When that comes out, I'm definitely going to do a review on it, because it seems like it's going to be a good one. Coming to the end here, we have my Universal Monsters Essential Collection. This may be my favorite collecting collector piece that's not signed by anyone uh, in my entire collection. It has Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Invisible Man, Bride of Frankenstein, Wolfman, Phantom of the Opera, and Creature from the Black Lagoon. It, it's so good. I, all of these are amazing movies. I didn't like Dracula that much, but that's okay. Phantom of the Opera uh, was actually one of my favorites when watching it. Just the music, everything was just beautiful to look at. Um, but there's just, you know, so much in this collection. I got postcards that I actually have hung up in my room, so they're not in here now, but I can show you when taking this out. You have some of the uh, cards right here. Obviously, it shows the uh, the movies that come included, but you have this original House of Horror booklet that kind of takes you through the world of Universal Monsters with Lon Chaney Jr., you know, The Invisible Man, you know, all these really iconic things, different uh, poster artwork and stuff that uh, was made for the films when they first came out. Just Again, a really, really beautiful looking book there. Um, and then here you have artwork from The Mummy and Frankenstein right there on the back. And it just, watch this, beautifully opens up to all the movies. You can't tell me that's not art right there. Look at that. 
got the invisible, we got Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, eh, Invisible Man, Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Wolfman, Mummy, and then of course, Dracula, and Phantom of the Opera. It's just a really clean looking setup here. And this one is from the UK as well. Uh, the US has its own version of the collector's edition, but it is nowhere near as nice. <laughs> monster fans, uh, I would highly recommend Creature from the Black Lagoon. The Wolfman is great. The Invisible Man is one of my favorites, but Phantom of the Opera is really, really good. Next up, we have Why Him, which is actually a really fun, great comedy movie with James Franco again. As you can tell, I have a particular uh, taste for comedy movies. Brian Cranston is great in this, especially after seeing him in Breaking Bad and Malcolm in the Middle. He does great in this in terms of comedy. Uh, and just the whole cast does really well. It's a funny, Christmassy kind of. I can see how people can see this as a Christmas movie, but it's a great romance family film uh, that features a lot of adult humor. So by family, I mean it's kind of like a National Lampoon's vacation movie where it's just a opposites attract kind of movie. So I'd highly recommend it for any James Franco fans I may have out there. And finally, the end of this we have. I literally had to make a cut on the final movie. Obviously, I'm hoping that Ryan from the future remembers to cut that out because the majority of my movies just fell over right now, so that's going to be fun to clean up. Um, but Wreck-It Ralph is one of my favorite Disney movies, not only because it's like a gamer's wet dream with all of these iconic characters interacting with each other, but look at that packaging. Look at that sparkle. Delicious. But yeah... <laughs> It's just a really good story. Uh, I love John C. Riley. I think he's great. And, uh, yeah, nothing too crazy about the packaging other than the colorful slipcover. But one of those tearjerker movies that uh, kind of holds you on to your seat in a really creative way and keeps you entertained all the way through. So, ah, uh, there you have it. my top 100 movies in my entire movie collection. My throat is hurting from all the whispering, and I just really hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, I don't know if you're still awake or if you stuck it out this long, but I just want to say I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Thank you for everything. Hanging out with you guys and being able to just talk about my passion as a job like it blows my mind, you know, so I love you guys, thank you, the only thing I ask of you is to please like the video, leave a comment, you know, whether you liked it or not, or talking about your favorite movies, anything like that, it really helps the channel, and of course, subscribing uh, really helps me as well, you know, it's really awesome to see how far we've grown as a community, so thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart, 